Wow. Okay. Hi, everybody. And hi, Jane. How are you? And uh, welcome to our new Victoria Real Estate Show. Why are we doing this, Jane? Because um, people want to know what's going on in real estate. And even though I don't know why we didn't think of this before, but anyway, it's a great name for the show. Right. There's a saying, keep it simple, stupid, right? <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Yes. Okay. How was your week? Uh, good week. Um, busy with out of town buyer. Um, really, really trying to find something in a price point that's a little rough. So, uh, but good week overall. How about you, Saf? So um, I went to write an offer on a property that was listed too high and mm -hmm. another property that was listed probably right at market value. And by us offering on the overpriced listing, we created multiple offers. And so we walked away. Right. Yeah. And the other, the, um, so now that, that listing um, has an accepted offer probably. I don't know. I actually never heard back from the agent. Yeah. Yeah. We had the same thing. Um, actually a couple of weeks ago, we wrote an offer and then it'd been on market for quite some time. It was overpriced. Um, and then suddenly there was another offer. And we, I said to my client, we had a discussion and said, you know, all we're doing here, because our offer is coming quite low. And if someone's writing a competing offer on this at this point, uh, we're just helping to, you know, raise the price. So we walked away. Um, and then the off, apparently the offer fell apart a few days later. So um, the place is back available, but my client has soured. So um, we may go back to it, but we'll see. Yeah, it just makes you realize how emotional real estate is. And it really is. It's yeah. not really logical. No. Well, that's what we're here for. We're, we're, we're trying to be logical and also uh, we're trying to be rational and we're trying to be uh, understanding of emotional. And we have to sometimes really bring in our own emotions. Like I, I find I sometimes have to like take my emotions out of it because I'll get out, you know, outraged on behalf of a client or sad or happy or what have you. And this is all wonderful to have emotion in real estate, but it's not really a... Uh, Sometimes it's important to sort of take a step back. That's what we're there for is to be that sort of clean, clean, uh, you know, voice of reason. It's not sustainable either. No, no, it's true. You can burn out pretty fast if you get highly, highly emotional and involved in this business. But uh, it's also what makes you a good agent is, you know, having that compassion and empathy and everything. So it's funny because I do my videos and I don't do my sexy, I don't do sexy videos. I do very factual and I um, do uh, like the tone is not, it's more informational. I'm like um, the God, what's his name? Um, David oh, yeah. Attenborough of real estate. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what you're referring to, but. Oh my God. Anyway, he's a. Tell me the link. <laughs> He's well, an amazing know, as, person. As, as many people will say, uh, there's there's a fit for everyone. You know, there's there's an agent out there that probably spends all their time um, at the local. This is, I, this is I'm not trying to make like a, a blanket statement, but the agent that spends a lot of time at the local bar is going to meet his people or her people, and they're going to connect and they're going to do business. Is that a professional way to meet clients? Probably not, but they're meeting their connection. Everybody's got a fit, whatever your lifestyle is, whatever your so, I mean, some people want um, emotionless. Well, it's not that. It's more It's more like this is, here are the facts about the property and it's uh, informational. It's not sexy. Me walking in slow-mo across the living room. Well, you know, you're also, I mean, so these people who do these things are either putting a lot of time or a lot of money into making really uh, slick and sexy video. Our video, like, we could do what we're doing here in, and make a, a three minute or five minute video, uh, condense everything we say down into five minutes and you people would get a lot of out of it. We, we don't have density here. We have, um, we just have a good time. We have personality. Sure. Okay. So welcome everybody to the new Victoria Real Estate Show with Andrew Plank and Jane Johnston. Yeah, we just found, you know, he said, she said, they said, doesn't really tell people what we're really doing here, which is talking about Victoria Real Estate. So why not? <laughs> just... And we have the URL. Oh, you can go to it and look at our shows. There you go. 
<laughs> okay, so today we're going to talk about uh, the market update. I love having the market update uh, the second day of the month so we can get really fresh data. And then we're going to uh, talk just about surveillance. Uh, an email came out from the board this week. And we're just going to explain. Andrew's got some really good examples of surveillance, which are funny. Um, and it's interesting because sometimes you tell your clients over and over again, by the way, there's a camera over there. Yeah. And they still talk. Okay, but let's do the arc market update first so we don't have the month the month end stats yet right we just i mean we have the simple stats but we don't have the real estate boards yeah we do have that yeah okay so we're going into the deeper stuff we're going into the deeper stuff so month to date so far okay uh so month to date so far market watch we have 304 new listings in the last seven days uh compare that to 212 properties that have gone pending uh, that gap has well, it's, it's a little smaller than last week. Last week we had almost, you know, two thirds pending, and uh, compared to the you know the full uh, new listings, well, there were about 350 new listings last week. So less new listings in a week's time. Um, 81 price decreases. That is a huge number. Um, end of the month. Do you think that makes a difference? You know, people saying, okay, we've agreed we're going to reduce our price at the end of the month if we don't get an offer. We're gonna see. We're gonna see why you'll you'll see visually why we're at where we we are at. Mm -hmm. uh, Ten uh, price increases. Uh, one property back on market. Um, Four hundred thirty-one uh, transactions. So I did see a, a price increase on a property, and that's because they had delayed offers. They didn't get any offers, and so they increased the price to their minimum price. Yeah, so people are listing at prices below what they reasonably expect, which is a sad thing uh, for buyers to see and to experience. But, you know, a lot of properties are listing that just you don't have a chance of buying it at that price. Yeah, and that, that requires some coaching um, on behalf of these of, of their agents to let them know, like, you know, this is don't get too excited here. <laughs> so um, 26 properties expired unsold and three were withdrawn. Right. And so um, we have also the board summary of last month. So 824 unconditional sales compared to 1,116 in April of 2021. Uh, 1,368 new listings compared to 1,516 in April uh, last year. And active listings were at 1,365. So we've almost caught up with the number of realtors in the board. And that's compared to 14 and 15, 1,454 last uh, April last year. Okay. Yeah, what Jean's referring to there is we have around, I think around 1,400 realtors. I haven't looked at the stats recently, but it, it bounces around. Um, so, you know, one one property per, per realtor is what we're getting close to parity there. <laughs> yeah. So over the past two years, we saw a big bump in 2020, um, June 2020, after covid uh, that's when the market kind of rebounded after a two month uh, hesitation, I will call it. Mm -hmm. And then we went down normally to December 2020. We saw a lot of sales happening in the fall of that year. Mm -hmm. And then uh, over the past year, it has decreased steadily where uh, we were below normal even in December. And then we have started to increase again and we're at 1400 listings. So we're, if you compare it to where we were in April, 2020, we're, we're down low. about 700. Yeah. Yeah. We're still low and, and way low compared to April. Yeah. Com April, 2020 low compared to April, 2021. Uh, but definitely that, that curve is on an up curve and we're seeing more and more listings coming on every, every month. Um, normally this curve is, is rounded. Like you've seen in the past years, there was, um, it's affected definitely by COVID, so that's that's making a change. But uh, watch for this to start to curve again uh, as we get into June, July, August. But I think we're going to see a much steeper ramp up, and that curve is going to be yeah. a big curve. So this is the total uh, new MLS listings compared to the sales. So um, as I mentioned, in 2020, from June to November, we had quite robust sales, 900 to 800 sales a month. That is very unusual. Um, and then we started out with a lack of listings in January, 2021 compared mm -hmm. to normal. And we didn't really ever make it up last year. It's funny. Um, and this is a bit of a sidebar, but you know, um, the, the provincial government just uh, announced that they are 
They have brought in a cooling off period for buyers, but they have no details in their legislation. They just essentially passed it and said, we'll figure it out later, but it's approved. Um, and so it's really, I mean, I think that's not really good legislation, of course, in the first place. But secondly, one of the comments that they made was, you know, we wanted to pass this now so we could be ready for the busy summer real estate market. And I just had to laugh because, you know, this is the busy real estate market now. They've just passed it, but they've, they've, they've missed the boat. They have not actually, uh, they've got nothing with any teeth in it that will have any kind of impact um, in the foreseeable future. And well, I heard it's it's going to be implemented in at the end of the year. Well, who knows? Because they don't have it's a, it's a big blank empty piece of paper. It's sort of like yes, we've approved it, but we don't have details. So anyway, point is is that they 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 really did prove they don't know much about the real estate market uh, by saying that they wanted to do this now so that they were ready for the busy summer real estate market. And if you've been watching this show at all, you understand. And, and you know, spring is the time when things are typically busy. Right. So actually, if you look at the um, solid line compared to the, uh, the the bars compared to the line, you'll see last year we were almost at a one to one ratio from um, June on, mm -hmm. which is abnormal. Uh, the year before is more normal where we have more listings than we do sales. And then right. um, now we're getting to where the sales are leveling out, but the listings are increasing on the right there. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this is very interesting to me. This is our sales to active listings ratio. Go ahead. Okay. So, I mean, if you just look at this graph in general, you can see, you know, from April, 2020, it starts and we were at, at that time, quite a buyer's market. I mean, that was, uh, was COVID was, was really, we were in the mess of it there at that time. Uh, and then the, the market started to come back. And as we went on and on, it got to the point where, you know, for every listing that listed, uh, a listing would sell. Not the, so we were getting to a one-to-one, -one, which is that 100%. Uh, and we actually got to above 100% because we, you know, obviously we had an inventory of properties. We had more properties selling than we had listing at one point, let's, for example, March 2021. Um, what we consider a balanced market is, and if you look to the right there, it's, it's pretty close to it. It's well, actually, that's a little bit off there. But mm -hmm. balanced market's really around, you know, 15 to 25%, I'd say, sometimes 20 to 30, it's subjective. But uh, <laughs> we're far off that. But the good news is it does look like we're moving towards balance, um, but still a strong seller's market. So normally, so everybody thinks when you list a property that's going to sell. In a regular market, the sale rate uh, can be two to three months. And the list to sale ratio is about 20% in a balanced mm -hmm. market. Recently, it's been like the sale rate has been a day, a week, at the most, a month. And so now what we're seeing is market, the housing staying on the market longer. And so what happens is buyers then decide that they have options. And so then they take their time. And that's what causes this to go down like that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And so where we see this impacting um, the price of houses is the prices of houses is leveling off. Starting to moderate. Yeah. Yeah. So we're up around 1.45. Mm -hmm. Cray, cray. But anyway. <laughs> I mean, if, you, if you'd bet me money a couple of years ago that we'd see like average house price 1.45, you know, now I think I probably would have lost the bet. Uh, it just, the, you know, this, the, the pace and the, um, the, the price the, the price increases have just been quite amazing and you know we hadn't reached that million dollar mark uh yet um you can see we've sort of um played around with it in that early um you know two years ago we, we were playing around the million dollar mark and under and it then we sort of hit it and it sort of flirted with getting like just right around a million i think people had a hard time understanding that houses in victoria were worth more than a million and then then the rise is just sort of from you know, January, February, 2021 on the rise just sort of, you know, started to go up and up and up. Um, so, but looks like we're maybe reaching a plateau. You can see plateaus in the past as well, but it feels like, you know, the last um, one, two, three, four months have been all pretty close together for in terms of pricing. It, it sort of feels like we've reached that rarefied air where people just aren't um, able or willing to go higher. And we also are seeing higher interest rates and lots of other impacts. So 
Yeah, and if you look at this, you can see like the agents are talking. We talk amongst ourselves about what's going on with the market. And we're all saying it feels like things are cooling off. And this is the data that proves it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, that being said, I want to go back to something you just said, Jane, is like when we see this, buyers then sort of pause and it becomes almost self-fulfilling because buyers feel like they've got more selections. So they, th they say they're going to wait. Um, this doesn't mean this can't turn on a dime again in the future. Um, and I just find it very ironic. And I've seen this in many markets in the past when buyers finally have more selection, they wait longer to buy and then um, they still lose out on some really wonderful properties. Yeah. Well, I think the biggest mistake people make is go, is this, is this the right property? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Can, yeah. Should I wait for the next best one? <laughs> so um, condos have also taken a bit of a dive. So we've gone from a high in January would you call, 2020. Would you call it a dive though, Jane? Like it's more like a slow descent. It's like it's a gentle descent. We're just not, we're not diving. <laughs> okay. Well, they're coming down kids. They're floating. And they're, they're, uh, they peaked in January. I, you know, after watching the market over the past years, I've learned a few things. One is you can't tell anybody what their house is worth in four months. And secondly, yeah. you can't tell what it's going to be worth in two weeks. You can only tell them what it's worth today. And yeah. so the market has shifted again. And we're looking at a, I don't think we're looking at a pop in a bubble. We're looking at a slow release, which needed to happen because if people with good money can't afford to buy a home, then the market has to shift. Mm -hmm. Okay. Row townhouses still going strong, baby. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to say we've said this before, but with townhouses, there's less of them in the marketplace. So these, these stats tend to be more jagged. Um, but you know, yeah, it's really hard to say. I mean, this looks to me like if you take out March 2022 uh, from February to April, there hasn't there's been still a ramp up, but it's not as profound as it has been, um, you know, since November. Yeah. And also they tend to be higher end now. People mm -hmm. are going for higher end townhomes, whereas mm -hmm. condos are more. We had a lot of micro condos before. Yep. So that's part of the reason, I think, for the it just depends on what's on the market when. There's a lot of new construction out there too. Jane, speaking of micro condos, just came across this one. Um, do you know that there's a certain square footage that lenders are having uh, some trouble um, financing under or that they won't finance under? 400? 500 square feet. Uh -huh. So I just came across this where there's a listing that's just under 500 square feet and the lender, the mortgage broker got to me and said, you know, most lenders are not going to um, they're going to need an exception because they have a policy that they won't lend uh, in certain um, certain markets for for micro units and they consider a micro unit under 500 square feet there are lenders that do it um, my client has a rate lock with a lender that doesn't and it sounds like 90 95 percent of lenders don't want to lend oh. to places under 500 square feet this was new to me uh, i had a conversation with the mortgage broker and said i'm embarrassed i i didn't i wasn't aware of this and she says there's so many different things you, you know just know you know how would you but um, yeah, first time I come across this. So important to know if you're looking at a micro place. Micro hmm. Okay, so I'll go over this graph since um, I like this graph. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, we'll just do single family homes, condos and row town homes. So single family homes, units sold last or last month, yeah, for um, April 2022, we're 393. That's down 27.6% compared last year. The average was 1.434. And that is up 0.1% from last month and up 25.3% from last year with a median at 1250. So um, the median really tells you uh, it's the middle of the pack. So it tells you where we're really going. So when I see the median is less than the average, actually, that's when I see that the prices may go down. So, but that being said, they're still up 24% over last year. And then um, the average house price last month was 1.433 and the average house price this month so far is 1.144. So we're seeing a bit of a, an adjustment there. 
on day two. Okay, uh, condos, 262 condos sold in April of 2022. That's uh, less, 20.8% less than last year. And the average price was $666,733. And the median was 601. So again, we're seeing a bit of an adjustment, but we're still up 22.9% over last year. And last month we had 279 units. Um, the average house price was 672. The median was 611. And uh, that is up from last year uh, in terms of price from 534. But the number of units is down compared to last year at 331. Okay, I know it's very confusing. Row townhouses, 102 sold. So as Andrew said, we have less inventory. Uh, we're up 20% over last month. Uh, in terms of last year, we're down 24.4%. Uh, the average house price was, or townhouse price was 946. That's up 9.5% from last month. And it's up 32.9% from last year. So, and I'll just go quickly. Last month, we sold 85 units. Uh, uh, row townhouses at average of 864 um, and the median was 840. And then last year we sold 135 where the median was uh, 690 and the average was 712. So we're seeing an increase in price, but less unit selling this year. So, yeah. And just as a side note, you know, Wow, manufactured homes, average price, 355569 I mean, that's a lot to pay for a tin can. Well, last year, I mean, when we got into real estate, the average house price was three ninety nine. dollars Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So there you go. And, you know, you pay a, you pay a fee to, um, you know, a leasing fee for your, your pad fee for the, for the manufactured homes. And... I, I was just looking at one recently. It was seven hundred dollars a month. So yeah. that's that. When you factor that in, you're paying a lot just to live in a manufactured home. Well, and plus a lot of them. It depends on where you live, but some of them have month-to-month uh, -month leases, and some of them have thirty-five-year leases. So it's very different. Mm -hmm. uh, you definitely. Um, I had a client interested in a place two years ago and I kept saying, you know, they're only month to month lease. Yeah. It's funny that, you know, sometimes people don't listen to you until they get to the decision and they go, you know, I could lose this place. Yeah. Yes, you could. And they did. They didn't oh, buy, it, but they did. They the the, the complex the park, the park got sold off. So this can happen. I mean there are some some there's there's some reparation available. But, you know, if you buy into a place and it's a month to month or even a year to year, you know, it's possible land is worth a lot of money. And these folks who are selling off these uh, these manufactured home lands. If you can buy one on, I mean, we've gone on a sidebar, but buy one on co-op land where it's a corporation owning it and you're buying a share in the corporation or buy one on bare, strat, bare land strata land like uh, you've got Summergate Village. Um, yeah. You can, those are much better protected, much better value, much better resale. Because the thing is, most of these manufactured homes are not movable. By the way, Summergate Village, tidbit mm -hmm. of information for everybody out there, all you realtors who are watching. <laughs> Did you know that the zoning is going to go back to single family home in two years? Oh, how interesting. So there was um, a, a, some sort of agreement and that uh, they would they could put manufactured homes. But the um, so there's latent value there. So yep. I just helped a client buy and I'm like, you, this is a good buy. Absolutely. Why are you telling our colleagues this? You should just tell me this and it's insider information. Okay. So do you remember last month we were talking about foreign buyers and how the federal government had come up with this uh, proposed restriction to prohibit foreign commercial enterprises and people who are not Canadian citizens or permanent residents from requiring non-recreational residential property. So what they're saying is that. they don't want foreigners to buy homes. So I thought I'd look and see where are people coming from? So 66.67% .67 of the buyers are well, coming from is greater. This, is this from the survey that the real estate board does? Yeah. What sources? Okay, thank you. 
1.52% are from the Malahat, 1.32 are from the Gulf Islands, 1.91 are from North Island, 12.76 are moving here from the mainland, mm -hmm. and 4.79% uh, are moving from elsewhere. So where is that elsewhere? Yeah. Three. Well, do you know? Uh, yeah, they're saying 3.23% uh, are from Alberta, 0.59% are from Saskatchewan, 0.78% are from Manitoba. Quebec is the highest with 4.59%. Atlantic Canada is 0.39% and the northern Northern Canada is 0.15%. I beg, I beg to differ, but when you say elsewhere for BC, that's just elsewhere within BC. So that adds up. Oh, totally to within BC, right. Sorry, yeah. yeah. 88.8, yeah. 8. sorry. 88.95, um, so outside of the lower mainland, Greater Victoria, Malahat, and all that stuff. So um, let's see, Northern BC, um, other areas outside of those that were listed, that's where the sorry. formula from that comes. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, but only 88, so 88.95% 88 of buyers are coming from within BC. And then Jane, you were alluding to the rest of the buyers coming from within Canada. I mean, um, that all adds up to 98.68%. So 1.32% are coming from the U.S. 0.93%. Uh, yes. Europe, one person, 0.05%. Asia, 0.2%. And other is 0.15%. Now, this is as reported by our colleagues. So these are not um, necessarily completely accurate stats. This is anecdotal. Anecdotal. When, when there's a sale, the um, real estate board asks the agent representing the buyers to um, to share the source where those buyers came from. So they have to fill up the data. Mm -hmm. But it's just, it's just interesting to me that, you know, we have this fear about foreign ownership, and I don't know where it is elsewhere in Canada that that's happening, but... We're, what we're seeing is 1.32% of buyers in greater Victoria are coming from outside of Canada. Yeah. And most of those, a huge swath of those is from the States. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. So let's get on to the next part, surveillance. Right. Okay. So, you know, privacy laws in Canada state that um, a recording of another individual is legal as long as one of those individuals is aware of it. So if you're on a phone call with someone and you are recording the conversation with that person, it's actually legal for you to do so. But it's not legal for you to record, you know, two other people who aren't part of the con part, you know, they're just walking on a property or you're, you're eavesdropping on their conversation. Um, so there's, a, you know, check into privacy laws. But the point here is, and what Jane and I want to really stress for folks is there's a lot and regardless of the laws there's a lot of um, recording devices and technology now in all of these homes that we're going through and there's a strong possibility that uh, someone could be picking up some of our you know our communications or our movements in the home uh, so obviously be careful what you do be careful what you say Right. So often like you'll go into a baby room and there'll be a baby monitor like the one on the top right here that'll be you know, for the baby, but the owners may have it, you know, unknowingly left it on. And so they're recording your conversation. Or knowingly. I mean, they could be out at the coffee shop during the showing and saying, hey, what's going on in our house? You know, all yeah. those people are using our washroom. They're, they, they are, uh, they're going through our, our drawers. What's going on here? Which we don't do. Well, we use washrooms. But uh, so this came up for me on the weekend because my client and I, um, sh she was in Vancouver. And, uh, and so I was uh, visually chatting while well, we weren't recording anything, but I was visually chatting, walking her through the property. And we, we I, I say we spent an hour there because we looked up and down and then I got a, we wrote an offer and then I got a text from the realtor saying, well, you didn't, your client didn't see the house. What are you talking about? I'm like, I went through that house with a fine tooth comb. Like, what are you talking about? And I realized they had a camera and they didn't tell me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, uh, 
my I, like uh, previously when we first started doing video um analysis for buyers um and we did uh, like a chat it wasn't viewed very well but now it's fairly common absolutely yeah for we do a video walkthrough of a home for our clients and I'm, i mean zoom calls or, or google meets or i, I whatever i stuff um but yeah, we're walking through the home and doing a video for our clients. And we're talking about the home in that home and we're giving our frank opinion of it, which if we're being recorded during that time, um, that may or may not come out well for those sellers who may be watching what we're doing. And it may not be legal for them to be doing that, but we're never going to know. And it is going to potentially impact um, their, uh, if we're competing offers, it might impact how they respond to our offer. It might impact um there, there's there's a potential for problems. Do you want to give an example? Do you want to show your example? Yeah. So, I mean, um, I'm often working with clients. So let me just uh, to stream. Um, so on the left here, this is just a, a, a standard ring well, this video style doorbell. This is the doorbell on my own home. And uh, so I, I went outside and I recorded a quick little video. And this is the kind of quality that you're going to get going with your agent and walk out the door and then oftentimes you're standing on the stoop and just discussing the uh, pros and cons of making an offer or what you liked about the house, what you didn't like about the house. Just keep in mind that you could be being recorded. Uh, there are so many different devices in these different homes. As you enter, there's this, um, we've got a ring doorbell here that I'm talking into. You could have inside a lot of different listening devices between baby monitors, computer monitors with, uh, with cameras on them, uh, the Google and Amazon and those various uh, uh, ecosystems of home apps. All of them are uh, potentially on and listening. And sure, there are privacy concerns. And sure, technically, you should be made aware that someone is recording you. But the fact is, is that these things happen. And be careful what you're saying in front of um, while, while on the property and in front of uh, something that could be potentially recording you. Yeah, often people have very frank conversations and they say, well, I've got my financing approved. You know, I can put $100,000 down. Maybe I should go 50 or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Or you just, yeah, anything you're saying can and will be used against you at the negotiations table. And, you know, this is information that the seller may, may take to their. You just, it's an understanding that when we're going through these homes, things aren't private. And as I mentioned, the privacy laws are that technically they're not supposed to be recording us. Um, I think uh, the real estate board even maybe have mentioned in their communication that, you know, it could be if, if it's pretty clear that there's recording devices around you, that it, it might be um, construed that we should have been aware that we were being recorded. Um, obviously, people can put <laughs> signs up in their home, you know, recording in process. But uh, yeah, Jane, want to take that there? So actually what you what realtors should do, maybe what sellers sh should do is add this to this checklist of what they should be discussing. Mm -hmm. So uh, they should tell them if there are any recording devices in the home. And if there are, then a notice should be put at the front door just to let people know that these devices are installed. And also realtors need to advise their clients, although I do this repeatedly and I, like I point <laughs> and, and I tell people that they're installed and maybe don't discuss this. Mm -hmm. the, I do find like this is the whole reason why um, people feel uncomfortable talking to talking in front of another realtor or talking in front of a seller. This is why the seller shouldn't be home during a showing because the buyer wants to have a frank conversation. That's the whole reason why you bring your own realtor through. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so if people, if they knew that their conversation was going to be recorded, they wouldn't say what they say. Right. And the takeaway again is just, you know, going into these homes, we do want to be comfortable talking about what we see. We do want to be comfortable um, exploring and analyzing the home. Um, and, and feel like we've got the privacy to do it. And legally, that's that's the requirement. But functionally, it is possible there's somebody, you know, watching what's happening. So just keep that in mind. And um, I will remind my clients if I feel like I'll point it out. Uh, I will say, let's not talk here. Let's go outside to talk about these particular things. 
Uh, and then, you know, I think that uh, sellers also just need to have an understanding that you know, we are analyzing and, and, and looking at the home and we're, it's our job to give good feedback. And so if you're going to, if you, if you're getting upset by what we're doing, then um, that's, you, you've got to manage your expectations there. Yeah. I always feel sad when somebody sends very blunt feedback to a client because they, uh, like through our app hmm. because the sellers see it. Like one person said, um, we went to a condo and, you know, you had a very small bathroom in the front hallway. In fact, my clients hated it. And so I, I wrote a note to the agent. I said, maybe just don't say hate. <laughs> it's so oh, blunt. <laughs> okay. I mean, this is a side note and, but Jane, you know, like not everybody said like, if I think it actually does say now, like feedback will be shared with the client. So we can request feedback through a certain program called TouchBase. And if we send that feedback, it either goes to the agent who shares it with their client or it goes to the agent and client. But yeah, I mean. Just be gentle because a seller, it's it's their home and we're going to pass that information along. And, you know, you can just, you can say stuff. You can say all of this in a different way. You, can. you don't have to reveal everybody's yeah. motivation. And there's nothing you can do about the, and also, you know, if you're giving feedback, it can be constructive feedback. Not much you can do about a small bathroom. Yeah. Um, so, you know, but okay, fair enough. Okay. So um, I am going on to a, another um, Zoom meeting in a few minutes. I just wanted to say, do you have any needs and wants, Andrew? I need, um, a West Shore house under a million uh, with three bedrooms and two bathrooms. I need a couple of condos under about well, one under five and five and a quarter or so. Um, one bed, one bath is fine. Um, can be. I've like, got one yeah? on View Street and it's beautiful. <clears throat> Not so sure about being downtown. <laughs> and one of them does need to have a dog. Uh, the other one needs to have a nice balcony. Okay. Um, yes. Okay. I have a new listing uh, in on White Birch in Sydney. It's priced at six ninety nine. It's two bedroom, two bath. Uh, I think it's eleven hundred square feet, and it's right on the ocean with a view of the marina. It's so beautiful. Yeah. And we're looking at offers on Thursday. I have a one bedroom, one bath condo on view. Um, and that is also, we're looking at offers on Thursday. That one's priced at $398. And it is, uh, I think, exceptionally priced. It's updated. Um, and it faces the street. And then I have a house coming up on Rockland in a few weeks. And that is a three bedroom, two bath in the main part of the house and then it has a suite in the back one bedroom it's kind of a studio with a bathroom it's nice and then it has a double car garage it's on rockland nice. and that'll be priced probably just under 1.5 million and then the i have a house that i had listed before a newton that's coming up and we're going to list at 1098 and this is a two bed it actually could be a three bed if you reconfigured the upstairs with two bath and it's a character home on a ten thousand square foot lot it's nice so and i have clients i have a client looking for a two bedroom two bath um with the waterfront area is nice like uh, rock bay and um i'm trying to think i have lots of clients looking for stuff so if anybody has anything <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> uh, I think the one that came up in Tree Lane Estates uh, in a steel and concrete there. I think it was two beds, one bath. What's uh, the address of Tree Lane? It's on Gorge. Okay. Yeah. I'll have a look at Okay. All right, you guys. So we're on next Monday. Andrew, how do they reach you? You can reach me. Uh, give me a call. 250-360-6106 or text. Email me, info at andrewplank.com. Uh, check out the website, andrewplank.com. There's lots of information there, a bio, uh, and uh, some some property information, some area information, lots of information about the various uh, strata buildings in town. Uh, Jane, how do people reach you? 
Uh, my name is Jane Johnston. You can reach me at 250-744-0775. And you can email me at briarhillgroup at gmail.com. I have two websites. One is uh, briarhillgroup.com and the other is vancouverislandtime.com. And we now have a new URL for the show, victoriarealestateshow.com. Victoriarealestateshow.com. We should include that somewhere. I will. Okay. I'll put it in. All right. Have well, a great week. Yeah, you too. Nice to see you. Thanks, everybody, for watching, and uh, we will see you again next week. And don't forget to subscribe. See ya. <laughs> Bye now. Bye.